if um, if he um, walks in, I'm sure he doesn't mind if we get started right now. I w I'm so happy you could join us today. I want to present Dr. Lee Gong Chen, who works with me in the Department of Preventive Medicine and Biometrics in the Division of Epi and Biostats. Dr. Chen does MD degree in Preventive Medicine at Tongji Medical University in Wuhan, China, where he worked, um, after he graduated, he worked in the Department of Epi and Health Statistics for over 14 years, and at the time he was working there, he also got an MPH in biostatistics. Um, and then he came to the United States about nine years ago. Um, I want to read you something that Lee Gong said to me. He said, I liked philosophy even when I was in high school. I found statistics as a new continent in my life after I graduated from Tongji Medical University. I believe there is a deep and solid association between the two disciplines. So during the last 12 years, he's been constructing a new statistical methodology to do trichotomic um, regression analysis. And it was in that process that he found some optimizations in some statistical methodologies to be what he considers theoretically incorrect due to randomness of sampling measurement. So Dr. Chen's idea is that we need new ideas to form um, new criterion to build correct methodologies. And um, his talk today will be um, regarding the definition of self-weight of continuous random variables. And uh, I just want to say that it's been a pleasure for me working with Lee Gong the last few years. I feel guilty because a lot of the work he does for me is quite monotonous. And he does statistical analyses that I tell him to do. But he's really, um, he really has a, a very open mind and um, doesn't just accept the status quo. Um, so I w I'm really glad that he's here today to, to share his research with us. And this is stuff that he's basically done on his own time. He works for me anywhere from three to four days a week. And this is something he's been developing for years. And um, so we'll hear about it today. Thanks. Thanks uh, very much for giving the opportunity. And uh, Jennifer's introduction. Um, uh, no. Actually, I'm humble. Uh, I'm just a master's degree in statistics. And take this title, uh, so I'm really humble. But I believe this is really a new step in statistics. So I have to say it's a new horizon of statistics. The first part, uh, I'm going to be talk about some basic concepts in statistics. Some concepts are developed by myself. Uh, in the current system, we, have, we may have some concepts defined in appropriate, and so we need to be adjusted, adjust their connotations. Yeah. My idea may not be partly or in, entirely incorrect. So, but I, anyway, I would like to uh, share my idea with everyone uh, here. Uh, the first thing is, uh, I, I consider is where statistics rooted. I think the statistics rooted in philosophy, because the, the purpose of statistics, statistics is to help us to know the, the outside of the world. The purpose of statistics is not for proposed mathematical statement or proof that it is for knowing, right? So, but knowing something is not the purpose of mathematics. It's an epistemology in, in philosophy. So, in my opinion, statistics is a mathematized methodology in epistemology, which is a branch of philosophy. So, I think statistics, statistics must be simple, so everyone can handle it, can understand it, can handle it. Uh, in philosophy, we have basic three uh, cognitive orientation. We have three basic questions in that. 
everyone can answer in their field, in the with their question, problem. So if we use if to replace all the words after if, we have the simplest question, what is it? That's almost all in statistics as well as in every science and philosophy. So I think statistics need a simple conceptual system. This is why I try to develop it. <coughs> Some conceptions in the current system are defined in appropriate. There's uh, some confusion, confliction, and something uh, unclear. So I try to eliminate all of them. Statistics begins from observing the objective world. So let's have the basic concept by observing the observation. We'll find what we have, what we are doing, what we can obtain, and what we can do in statistics. That's we can understand what statistics is. This is a typical sampling data set in statistics. This is for coronary heart disease. The, data, the original data set are sorted in HDL, so I just take up the first part of first 18 records here. So you can see the HDL is in very low. In, this is a typical data set. We all develop concepts based on this. Before uh, when I talk about the basic concept in statistics, let's have the basic concept in epistemology. This is three subject, object, and observation. Everyone know it. So I don't, it, it don't, I, it doesn't need to explain. But we have a basic three logics in philosophy. Everyone uh, here may know deduction and uh, induction, but someone may not know dialectics, but someone may know, may know. Uh, the dialectics is a logic developed by Hegel and uh, Karl Marx for how to observing and ob cognizing the object. It, it consists of three basic aspects. The first is observing the object in all different angles. The second is observing the object in an assumption that the target may be associated, may have association with everything involved in a system. The third one is observing the object in a dynamic and uh, developing process. <coughs> That's the dialectics. It's different from the above, too. So, it is worth to point out that there's only two logics in the current mathematical system. Deduction and induction. In the Western philosophy, uh, in the most of Western philosophers, for example, the Rousseau, they didn't think, uh, think about it the dialectic. They didn't agree the dialectics. Also is a philosopher as well as a mathematics, very famous. Uh, he don't agree the dialectics with the Hegel. So uh, because he said the mathematics must be built in a rigorous certainty. 
And the dialect today caused uncertain understanding on a statement in mathematics. However, the statistics is just dealing with uncertainty rather than certainty. That's different from mathematics. So, after we have the basic concepts and the basic logic, let's go to the development of basic concepts in statistics. First is the individuals. The individuals equals to observe unit. Everything in the domain of epistemology is an independent existence or substance, or entity, or object, with all knowable, known, and unknown attributes, by which an individual can be distinguished from all the others. So everything existing as the smallest unit in a specific scope can be called an individual, not just for a person, everything. <coughs> Attribute. Attribute is equal to the variable name in the data set. An attribute is an abstract character of an individual in a specific quantity and a quantity and or quantity by which we can we may define at least one group or category in the in the individuals. So it's an abstract character. This is the attribute. Then sub-attribute. Sub-attribute means it's equal to the observed values of an attribute upon an individual. For example, we have name, a set of names, Aristotle, Bacon, Hegel, or gender, male, female, and uh, abnormal. So in the current statistics, in a uh, convention of the current statistics, uh, a sub-attribute that is observed upon an individual can be called uh, observed value, this current convention. For example, this, let's go back to the data given before. In this table, all the name in a group, in the color group, are attributes, are called attributes. But the ID is not. The ID was given by a subject. It is not the essential object, uh, attribute of the subject. Uh, of the objects, sorry. So it is not an attribute of the individuals, right? Yeah. So, but it, it, it is minimal. Yeah, that's for organizing the data set. So all the records in the orange color are sub attributes. Invariable attribute. I would like to take a simplified word in attribute for the future use uh, to simplify our statement in the future. An attribute is said to be invariable if it is self, it is itself, or there's no sub attribute that can be defined under its name or it is unnecessary to define the sub attributes even if they exist. For example, the age group will take, if the age larger, uh, older than 35, so everyone must be, um, have this condition in the data set. The, the race and the age G are invariable attribute in this data set. It means the risk 
project focus on white men, uh, white and uh, the age older than 35. That we have the variable attribute. The variable attribute is equal to the random variable in the current system. Actually, in the current system, the random variable is random variable attribute. That's why I just take the variable attribute. Because the, the variable is a gentle. Actually, it's a mom, right? So, and actually, the set to the variable is there are at least two different sub attributes that can be defined on its name in an observable experiment. That's easy. <coughs> yeah, now here, all the uh, blue, lay, blue, namely in blue, are variable attributes, and the, re the red ones are invariable attributes. But ID is not. So, in all the variable attributes, we have discretely variable attribute or discrete attribute and the continuous variable attribute because we have uh, we we op we often judge the object with their quality and the quantity right so we have the different two kinds of attribute and here in this table the name and the gender, is, as well as the <coughs> same HD is commonly have disease, are uh, discrete uh, vertical. And uh, the pink ones are continuous. Then, uh, population. The population is a uh, set defined with all invariable and variable attributes. It includes all everything, not just the uh, invariable attribute or variable attribute, it includes everything. And in the current uh, system of the zero of probability, we have a, a specific term, population space. This is use the population to define a space so the space, space is a general concept, but the population is a narrow concept in statistics. So this, here, the space must have the all attributes of population. So the population is equal to population space. That's the same concept, with the same, because they have the same connotation. Scale. I introduced the this concept of interest statistics to define a uh, scale space in order to uh, replace the cone growth sample space. Cone growth defined the scale space as a sample space. I think this is wrong. Uh, this, a scale is a measurement or judgment tool for observing the object, object, or a tool for statistical survey. For example, the a statistical questionnaire is a scale space for the research project. It's a complex, not just a single one. For example, uh, to match height or match weight. It in, in a scale space for risk for a statistical survey include every scale, every scale. So it's a, it's a set of scales. Vivian, I think there's a question. Yeah, can I get any question? Uh, you said that you disagreed with uh, one aspect of scale, and I missed that. You said there was something about Komogoro scale, I think, that's wrong. Yeah, what, I don't understand? agree with it. You don't agree with it at all? Yeah, I don't agree with him. Uh, he defined the scale space as a sample space. 
actually, the sample space is a term. It's used a sample to image a space, right? Yeah. The space is a general concept. The sample is a narrow concept in statistics. If we use the sample to define the space, the space we have the same attribute with the sample. So actually, it's the same. The same concept. A sample is equal to the sample space. And, and what is it that you disagree with? I, di I don't disagree with the sample space defined by column growth. I, uh, so I adjusted the connotation of the sample space to scale space. Oh, okay, so you're saying since they're handled in the same way... I use a could... different term to replace the concept uh, okay. of the column growth. Since the space isn't the same as the sample, you're giving them two different terms. Yeah, yeah. I, I, in my opinion, a sample is equal is equal to the sample space. The sample a... space is the sample itself. A sample space must be the sample itself. Okay. So, in the universe, there's a space. Yeah. Okay, and you're, you're differentiating the sample that you take from the space out in the universe. No. Pr probably I'm holding you up, I shouldn't do this. Maybe I <laughs> could ask you maybe. discuss uh, after that. the presentation. Okay. So your, your space is a, a specific space? No, no, no. The it's space is the sample space. itself. That's, That's what I'm saying. In the sense that you're def defining, say, in a universal location like here, you're saying that my, my space is your definition of space, that it's me, it's not in relation to the other independent uh -huh. players in this space, you're saying that him or me or me okay. is a different object of the space. We have a sample concept after this. The sample in statistics is not an individual, it's not equal to an individual. It, it, it is a sample, it's, it, it's a set of n individuals, not just any one. An individual in a sample cannot be called a sample again. We, we need a rigorous conceptual system without any confusion or confliction. Well, they don't, I don't understand what a space is. Space is, a, is a, I think it's a, a physical concept. We actually, we can, we don't need space. This term, we don't need. But in the current system, we use this concept. So I would like to clarify the is is the essence of the common law of sample space. What is the essence of the common row of sample space? I, I tried to clarify it. Well, you, you could just make it simple by saying the space is a set in which certain operators are defined. So uh, addition may be defined. Um, yeah. Multiplication may be defined. That, that, would, that would be a common kind of space. Just because I introduce a scale, the concept scale in statistics as a, as a professional, so we we'll have scale space. We can define this. For example, <coughs> this is a scale space for sampling. Here. For example, race. The scale space of the race is equal to y. And uh, age is in this range, 35, 1, 40. We will find the, the, uh, what is it, the youngest is 38. So we, we can take a uh, smaller digit than this one. E each uh, scale space marked in red for each attribute. This is the sample space of 
become wrong, divine. Yeah. So you're saying that a scale space is to an attribute as the scale as space, space I'm defined. The scale space I define is equal to the sample space defined by common law. This is just a terminology. This terminology is different. Actually, they are same. So they are same. Scale spaces you're using as a general term, and sample space is a specific term. Is that how? Uh, yeah, the sample space is the is equal to sample. It's the sample itself. Right. Yeah. That 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 uh, that's why I define because I don't agree with the common law. It can't it can't use the uh, it may cause confusion in some situations. Because the scale space is not equal to sample. The scale is not equal to sample. So we cannot use the sample to define the sample space like a common growth did. Actually the the sam the sample here uh, here the sample here in, in the definition of common growth is equal is equal to the scale, not the sample <coughs> itself. So we cannot use sample here to define the space. It's a terminology. It's terminology, right. but it's very important. You may cause some confusion or we must I think we must adjust it. Random measurement or random decision, these are mathematical concepts. Uh, everything in statistics are uh, random measurement, um, random measurement. Nothing is certain. So after we have the measurement, we have a random distribution for every attribute. Sample. A set of n of individuals in a statistical survey will constitute a sample. So, an individual in a sample cannot be called a sample again. Otherwise, we cause confusion. I overheard someone told me I have a sample. I don't know. What exactly he said, or a set of the individuals, or an individual in a set. So, I would like to take create a new word, random individual, or random. This is in my system. This is a new word, random means random individual. Everyone can understand. So. A sample is a random set of n random in. And uh, this is the dialectic observation. This the definition in a dialectic, dialectic logic. So a sample is equal to a set of n random in. It's equal to a data set. It's, uh, it's a sample space. A sample is a sample space. A set of uh, is equal to a set of random experienced facts in real and objective meanings to a subject or a situation. This is a sample. It's not an individual in a sample, but it is not a set of purely abstract marks and numbers. Everything in a sample is not a purely abstract numbers. It has meaning. That's different from mathematics. So sample space. A sample space is a sample itself. This is because we use a sample to define a space concept. So the sample space must be equal to the sample. Because they have the same attributes. If if something if A is equal to B, then A 
and B must have the same attribute. That's philosophical. Measurement space. A measurement space is, uh, comes from the current theory of probability. Okay. As a space is said to be measured with everything in it can be measured on a scale space. Because we have introduced the scale space into the system. So a, a measurable space can be defined in this way. As a population is a measurable space, since all individuals in it should be measurable on the scale space defined before the research. Begin. Beginning. So, measured space is uh, because a sample is a measured space. Because a sample is the space. Continuous and uh, continuity of space. <coughs> this is a new concept. I think the continuity of a space this is a new concept in the statistics. So far, we just have continuity of space. But what's the continuity, continuability of space? Let's give, let's give you an example. For example, we have a uh, rect of 100 males height and a rect of 100 females height. Each one is a continuity. It's a continuous space. But if we mix them up, then the rect of 200 people's height will be a continual space. It is not a continuous space. Because this space might be an overlapped or separate space of the two space they are mixed. Of course, they can, if this mixed space can be matched in a continuous manner in a continuous way, but it is continu it is divisible. So it is continual. This is the same thing. After we introduce this continuability of the space, so the divisibility of the space will be easy to understand. However, a, co a continuous space cannot be divided. Because it is a continuous. <coughs> so this is a continuable space. After we sort it on the gender, the space will be separate. It's divisible. It's, it's divided, divided. Yeah. So we are saying. This is sample, right? The whole table comes to the space. It is the sample space. That's what I think. This is uh, associated with, to, uh, with mathematics or random correspondence. This is a very important concept. Many statisticians make mistakes because they don't take the don't uh, take care of the random correspondence especially in the optimization uh, we let's go back to the data set we'll see the age 38 is the youngest one right in this sample. So every, every other attribute corresponding to the set A is random. It's a random data, uh, digit, not a certain relationship to the youngest one. And fortunately, the optimization are used in that way. It takes the minimum or maximum of, uh, of an optimizer to deter 
a statistical model or statistical decision in which every parameters in the model or decision are random measurement. So actually we cannot use the minimum or maximum of the optimizer of the optimizer to make a statistical decision or model selection. That's why I said the optimization is incorrect in statistics. We must give up of expectable correspondence. We must take the expected correspondence to make statistical decision or model selection. For example, give you two random variables, height or weight. We cannot use the minimum uh, uh, the minimum height to determine the expectation of weight. We cannot. Definitely we cannot. We have the Expectable correspondence for the height and the weight as they are at both uh, at both <coughs> uh, at the expectation of both, right? Only the correspondence between the mean height and the mean weight is expectable. Others cannot be expected because all the other correspondence are random. Okay. Below this one. Probability space. The probability space is a concept. It's terminology in the theory of probability. A probability space can be defined over a sample space. That's the sample itself. So we always have the probability of a sample. The whole is equal to one. We cannot define a probability over a population space because the population space is usually unknown. So to define the probability space over a population space is in vain. We cannot define a probability over a scale space alone either because the scale space is just a measurement tool, not the sample, not the actual sample. It's just a tool. <laughs> However, the probability space in the current system is defined on the scale space. That, this is why I try to correct. Uh, the relation, uh, the last graph is for, to, uh, how to say, to, uh, Plain something is, is easy. Statistic. Statistic is the core of statistics. It is an attribute about a sample or sample space. It is a random point measure on a sample attribute. It is a real measure, measurable function defined over sample space or a probability space. Because the probability space is, is equal, is always equal to the sample space. That, or the sample itself. It is a random constant. I would like to use this new term, random constant. Because in my opinion, random, randomness is not equal to variability. This is different. This is different thing. It is an expected constant. A statistic defined over sample space is a expected constant. It is a statistical measurement or calculation tool. Because every statistical work is for calculating or recognizing. This is also an example uh, of applying dialectics when we think about uh, statistics. <coughs> so what statistics should do is to construct specific statistics to describe a sample space, that's to infer, that's to infer the relevant attributes of the population. 
That's the purpose of statistics. Therefore, all records in a sample can be understood as random constants too. So all the graphs in red and uh, blue are random constants, not random variables. However, in the current system, they are defined as random variables. In the current system, now the name are defined as random variable. That's different. Can you tell me your definition of a random constant in, 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 in difference to the current terminology terminology of a variable? Uh, the variable are uh, the name of the attribute. They are abstract characters of all sub-attributes. They are sub-attributes of attributes. They are random measurements. They are random constants. When you measure, you can determine. So that's a variable term. Yes. But in your position, you're saying it's a random constant. Yes. But in fact, in real term, in real perception, it's a, it's a continuously changing. So it's a variable. We see something is continuous change due to the sub attributes can be measured continuous. Some, what, what can be measured is Tg, not 4.22. Right? Different concepts. concepts. You're saying once you take a snapshot of the variable in time, and it's a constant, it's a random constant, it's no longer a random variable for that individual. Uh, actually, all the measurement in statistics is random. So the result is a random constant because the quantity or quality can be de determined when you measure. <coughs> for when the object be measured. You're just saying once you determine the value, it's no longer a variable, it's a random constant. Yeah. In a sample, they cannot be in a specific sample or in a given sample. This quantity or quantity cannot be changed again. But in real biology, but they are randomly but same biology, obtained. But same biology always changes. Yeah, in the real world, it's changing. Yeah. Because a sample is a random obtained from a population, right? This this. This is not a big deal. If, if you think this, for example, uh, 1.98 in TG is changing yeah. any time, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's changing. But for this sample, it's not changing. So you're not calling the random variable yeah. well, a random constant. You're calling the actual information for each observation the random constant. Yeah, because the quantities or quantities are obtained random. I just call, so I, I would like to call them random constant because they will not change in a given sample. They always change in biology, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yes, yes. But your definition of a constant, you just made the statement that it should not change. I say this change. You just the say time, time, time at that well, one point in time. Well, this, that's a specific time. But the, term, the, the, the definition of a constant is it's always not changing. Ah, but when you say a random variable that's always changing is a function of the uh, environment <coughs> where it's at, obviously, you, I can say that my cholesterol will always be the same. Is that tr That's correct. In the sense that I can have a cholesterol value today, but tomorrow it's different. With right. that snapshot from today, well, will that's, never that's just a, a, a yeah. I, I agree with that. Uh, but that's it, a very limited definition of a constant. In, in my opinion, the variable, what can be defined as a variable, is the name of attribute, not the quantities or quality or quantities 
of the record. We see something is variable. We see a re an attribute is variable if they are sub attributes is variable. It's different. Parameters is an attribute of the population that and will be estimated and inferred in a relevant sampling statistic. It can be treated as an invariable attribute. Invariable attribute. It can be treated. However, it is variable in this history, a natural history of parameters. It's not that. It's, in, it's variable. Random space. <laughs> so the random space or random system is the same concept. We need such a mathematical expressions to uh, express this technology. But uh, the, how to say, a random space or random system does not indicate any specific concept stated before. It is a, a comprehensive existence in a specific research uh, project. Everything in your research project uh, so, uh, treated by statistics can be called a random system. <coughs> it's an abstract uh, concept. So let's pass to the uh, common rules. Common rules uh, definition of uh, probability space over here. Because the Sample space, uh, the probability space, always defined over a sample space, that, or the sample itself. So the S can be ignored. Because everything will be explained or described in probability. The probability, the pro proper, the properties of var var uh, variability, or the probability, the properties of random variable. And I define this uniquely. It means in the first line, every name of the attribute is unique. That's the uniqueness of random variable. That variability or differentiality. Then random. Then independent. The independence is not to be ex uh, explained for variable, the uh, attributes, different attributes, but for individuals. <coughs> the individuals in the sample are independent. It means Everyone entering enter into the sample by itself is not uh, is, is not determined by all the other individuals. That's the independent convergence. That means a uh, random measurement is convert is convert to uh, convert to a expectation or the measurement. Uh, the random distribution. It is uh, equal to a random distribution. Boundary means uh, any random variable measured in a range. If, if uh, how say? If a uh, measurement has no range and uh, no centralized centralized location, is it is unknown. Relationality, relationality, 
for how to pronounce it? Relationality, relationality, or relationality. Both are fine. We, okay, we need this concept in statistics because we do regression analysis. The regression or re correlation analysis is for the relationship among attributes. I would like to take attributes from now, not variable. Yeah. Everything in a system must be related to each other in different levels of the strength. If something is not related to everything in a system, it is not in this system. It must be eliminated from this system. Nice repeat. Probabilis, probabilis, uh, probabilistic, probabilistic, probabilistic. Yeah, this word exists in, in the system. Uh, it means any variability of individuals in a population occurs in an expected possibility or probability. And the probability itself is a, specific, a special random variable, random magic. The probability itself is a random magic. Which is measurable in the functional range. Axiomatic uh, statement in statistics. I would like to give this. Uh, actually, I, ha I have gave this. I have. Uh, I gave this uh, presentation at uh, 2009 in the joint statistical meetings. Axiom one: Any unbiased statistic defined over sample x for parameter p x can be obtained through its random variable x or variable var attribute x. A set of parameters defined on the random variable attribute is not equal to a set of this one defined on this even n is equal to m if the two random Variables are not defined on the same probability space. If they are not defined on the same probability, they are not equal to each other. Axiom 3. All observations of random variable x defined on a random space constitute a single distribution which has only one expectation. Axiom 4. Any single observation xi of it's not an estimate of the population expectation. It is just a random point. So the median might be an uh, exception. Might be. If we have no other ways to estimate. And five. If two random variable x and y constitute a joint distribution, an observation xi on x which randomly corresponds to an observation y, uh, yj on y cannot return the expectation y except in the case that only one observation x and y can be observed for both this means the optimization in the current system is wrong it's theoretically incorrect by current system, do you mean Kolmogorov system? When you say the expectation is wrong in the current system? No, no, no. Optimization. Optimization. Well, the optimization is wrong. Yeah. The optimization. Some optimization, not everyone. Some optimization. Because if someone used the optimizer to make a model selection, they usually use the minimum or maximum of the optimizer. optimizer to make a model decision, which you know, the, the minimum optimizer or maximum optimizer is one of the xi, right? Mm -hmm. They cannot turn the 
expectation of the model. Because the, the premise of a model is random measurement. They are changed uh, along with the change of the optimizer. As we say, there's a scale or criteria in machine random attribute. And the scale or criteria must be the same for every individual in the population. This is the so-called measurement consistency. Otherwise, if we, if, we, if we don't have this consistency, we'll have systematic error in measurement. Only the, the consist, measurement consistency can guarantee the measurement error is random, not systematic. Question before you go on. Okay. For axiom five, don't most, don't most optimizers follow this, the surface of the space to find the maximum or the minimum for, uh, for the variables? So that you're saying that, uh, that that's not valid is really to say that uh, most systems for optimizing are not valid. Uh, excuse me. Uh, excuse me, could you please... Uh, okay, maybe I could talk to you later. I'll talk to you later. Can I ask you this question afterwards? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Can I ask a question now? I, I, I understand there's a big paradigm shift to current systems or methods as, you, as you're describing, to what you're describing. Um, but I'm not getting a sense of, like, say the, the paradigm shift between the quantum statistics where, you know, they're fixed but unknown values constantly that we're trying to estimate the population over long-term frequency versus a Bayesian statistics where you, you consider these same quantities, random variables. There's some, you know, there's some sense of how that paradigm shift actually leads to something that may be advantageous in some situations. What, what would be the advantageous, what, what, what would sort of be something advantageous about working with your system? I don't have a good sense of that from what you're saying here, but that would be a good thing to try and convey to others. Yeah, I think so. So what would be advantageous of your system versus, say, Kolmogorov's or standard optimizers? Uh, I have to say, I don't have an education background in USA, so my English is uh, very limited. Oh, okay. Some words I cannot understand in your statement or in your questions. Well, maybe, maybe I'll go with a quote from a, a self-taught statistician, George Box. He said, and I tell it to my students here all the time, all models are wrong, but some are useful. Oh, um, so okay. I'm trying to say, just in your modeling approach is, and your system you're using, what is, what's the useful aspect of it? What's the what, are, what is useful in terms of, like I have in, infectious disease researchers come to me to try and design studies to answer questions they have. Okay. So how would my... Shifting my methods to, to a system like yours be yeah. actually advantageous or useful? Advantageous? What's yours better? What's the better? What's better? What's better? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Advantage. Oh, okay. Uh, at this point, before at this point, I'm trying to explain the new concept system. Mm -hmm. After this, I will get. Uh, immediately, I will give the new method methodology I developed. Yeah, that's, and then you will understand how to reconstruct the, the methodology, use a new criteria to do model selection or statistical decision. How to select the, uh, how to determine the parameters of your model. Okay. So how do you, do you have an example of that? that yeah, well, I have, okay. I will give you, I will give you immediate, immediate. Okay. Yeah. You know, you have they wait, you have this room until 11.30. 11.30? Yeah. Okay. Maybe? Okay. Definition. Uh, differentiality, similarity, and uh, increase. Increase. We need to define this. Uh, for any two constants, uh, 
Uh, random uh, constants, they are different and they can be defined in this way. If the range of the attribute can, uh, is known, the R is the range of, uh, of a random variable. You, you use the current terminology. Yeah. Uh, if the R is unknown, we can use this formula to define the differentiality of two, any two random constants or any two random measurements. The same energy can be defined as one <laughs> minus differentiality. Linkage. We open, uh, for example, uh, we have an uh, experiment. One group, no treatment. The other group has treatment. We want to know some clinical examination. Uh, uh, if the ex clinical examination is linked, is linked, has some linkage to the treatment or untreatment, then we have expectation what for one group, yeah, the other, uh, one group of one experiment for, for the other. Then the linkage. They are linked to the treatment or untreatment can be defined in this way. It is measured in, uh, in, in range, in the range, negative one to positive one. Okay, let's go back, now let's go to the definition of self-weight. How to, this will, uh, this will tell you how to define self-weight. For example, if we use the optimizer to do model selection, we'll take the self weight mean of the optimizer to determine the model parameters, not the minimum or maximum. What's weight? Weight means something's important to some to others. It should be matched in the range of in the range zero to one. That would be great if we can do it in that way. So what is self way? The self way means something important to itself, especially in statistics. The self way will be a random measurement, and it can be defined as the importance of a random mean to the expectation of a random distribution. Since the, since the expectation is always the core <coughs> target statistics in statistics, So, I define the self weight is the importance of, a random, of any random point to the expectation of the distribution. Uh, oh, this is a very important statement, this paragraph. The importance of a random, of a random point to the distribution expectation should come from its differentiality and the similarity to the expectation. However, the, the expectation is unknown. So the uh, it, because the distribution is constructed by all homogeneous random individuals in a random sampling measurement. Therefore the differentiality and the similarity to the expectation is equal to a cumulative differentiality and a cumulative similarity to all random points in a distribution. This is a very important philosophical statement for, define, for defining the self-weight. If, if you can understand this, self-weight is easy. Can I, can I ask a question then? Okay. So what's the uh, uh, relationship of uh, the homogeneous random mean, as you're saying, mm -hmm. in a heterogeneous uh, 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 space, or a heterogeneous uh, uh, ran random mean, uh, space? Okay. If I agree with you in the... In you, that will find, you will find. What's the uh, difference of homogeneous and the heterogeneous, mm -hmm. right? 
in, uh, in defining the self wave. The terminology is uh, uh, associated with the concept I explained just before. Uh, we just need to know that in the apps with a uh, uh, set, uh, raises vertical x and it n random point value. Okay. And the x, I'll say this, raises the i random point of the r uh, with subscribe x is the range of the x. Okay. This is uh, a typical data set. If we are given a single random variable x, right? Yeah, this is the x. It can be simplified in this way. Let's try to address. Point to point differentiation and the signaling. We define the point to point differentiation in a sample. It's xi minus xj, is their abstract value, divided by the range of x and the signal will be defined as that uh, sum of all different energy as a cumulative different energy and then take the sum of the similarity as a cumulative signal uh, respective Consider the product of the cumulative differential energy and the cumulative signal energy. Because the differential energy of a point to everyone are homogeneous. And the, the similarity of a point to everyone is homogeneous. But the cumulative uh, differential energy and the cumulative signal energy are heterogeneous. They are not homogeneous. Mm -hmm. yeah. So homo for the homogeneous measurement, they can be added together. So we take this product of the cumulative uh, differentiality and the cumulative signality. Then find the minimum product V. Take this v i minus minimum v, uh, v divided by r v. The, the v is the product of cumulative differentiality and the cumulative similarity. So let's define this as a relative contribution to the expectation of uh, of the i point. This r. This is a concave self-weight. Actually, the dr or v is a can be called self-weight, but they are real number. They are not in the range in the range zero to one. They are real number, neither than one. However, they can be called a self-weight. So, this v or r will give us a concave self weight curve in this way. If the sum, if the distribution is uh, square, this is not ideal definition for the self weight. We cannot define in this because it's contradictory to the to our philosophical analysis before. Here, it is contradictory, contradictory to this analysis. So we must find another way to define. We must take this opposite of the R to define the weight, the self weight. Then we we'll have the convex self weight curve. It is measured in range of zero to one. So
self-deviation, the self-deviation, the deviation is very important in statistics. I will find a way that the deviation will be easy to be calculated. We can define in a two way, two different way. So we need to reach consensus on this matter. Why is for the traditional one in a traditional uh, in a traditionally uh, traditionally we can define it in in the in with this sum of self weight minus one or self weight or the sum of self weight minus the self weight the mean of the self weight we can define a self weight we can define a self weight for x. That will definitely can define a self weight for the self weight itself. So the self weight will have a self weighted mean. Why we can define it this way? Because we can consider the one is the is the expectation of the weight of each f uh, of each x i in the sample. We take this arithmetic mean to uh, uh, to be as the expectation because we so we think everyone has the same weight equal to one. So that's the that's why the arithmetic mean calculated in that way. Example let's see. Ah, this is a simulation for. Uh, 100,000 points in a normal distribution. Given mean and uh, standard deviation, then take a simulation uh, process. Then uh, for each simulation, simulated point, we calculate their self weight. Then we have this self weight curve. This is not a normal curve. But it looks like a normal, normal curve. This is uh, for a square sample. Uh, this is a real sample. It's just 31 uh, observations. This, so the, the third column is the first one record. Goes to uh, 31. The third one. Record, and then this is uh, this is the uh, okay. uh, differentiality, and then this is the uh, cumulative uh, cumulative if, uh, uh, differentiality, and this is the cumulative similarity, and this is the product of this this is the weight, this is the minimum weight, and this is the range of the weight, this is the R. And this is C. Both R and C are actually in range of 0 to 1. But the C is the opposite of R. This is the result of the sample. Uh, the arithmetic mean marked in red line. And the convex self weighted mean. This is at the top. And this is a concave self weighted mean. Is it uh, here? So it's not ideal, right? It's a uh, biased estimate. But the convex one is real is a real centralized centralized location of the distribution of square distribution. Actually in the current system we have the definition of self weight. It is defined as W I is equal to X I. I do not agree with this. So we always have such a relationship 
between the v and x itself. With this self weighted self weight definition, we have the self weight mean three point five. I do not agree with it because this is a bad definition. Okay. Differential test with self weight. Once we successfully define the self weight, we always estimate the expectation at the uh, two location. We have experience, right, for the squared distribution, the mathematical mean, the arithmetical mean, uh, maybe shift from the <coughs> top, right? So if the if the two distribution compare uh, in this way, the arithmetical mean will give us a smaller difference, right? However, if we take a self-weighted mean, the difference between the expectations will be larger. We're back to their real position. Real position. So the com the probability for the testing will be will be more actual. So I believe this is the new generation, the next generation of differential testing. Okay. Uh, this is just a statement. The discussion we we can everyone can conclude. What's the Thanks for everyone. Maybe, I maybe think we can discuss some, some yeah, questions. I believe the definition of self-weight is, uh, is successful in statistics. That's why I call my presentation this uh, new horizon of statistics because it will change everything in statistics. Mm -hmm. We can definitely define a self-weight for any continuous variable. Thank you.